Good morning, Kevin. Uh, good morning, Salman. How have you been? Pretty good. It has been a while, and it's you seem to be in some other part of the world. Yes, yes. Uh, where I am, uh, the acoustics are not very good due to a weird shift in gravity. So uh, I put, I'm putting this on. I hope you can hear me, you can see me. If I do start floating away, though, uh, let me know, because I sometimes don't notice it. So hey, um, this is our No Frills Film Autopsy. <laughs> no Frills Film Autopsy was bare bones. Bare bones. Uh, <clears throat> so, so let's jump into it. Okay, so we saw Interstellar on Friday. Opening so night. let's let's get into it. What did you think? I think it's such an interesting film that uh, that Nolan has made for for one main reason is that it the film is full of uh, science fiction adventure, um, interesting science fiction scenarios. Uh, about a possible future um, and possible space travel in the future, but it has a heart. It has a big heart. And I know some critics have uh, said not very nice things about it because they, they've said that it's sappy, you know, that the, the, the per interpersonal relationships in the film are sappy. I personally did not find them sappy. I thought they were genuine because I think you need to feel a rather um, genuine sense of the connection between father and daughter to understand why he is doing what he's going to do and the, and the gravity of, uh, and the, of the necessity of what he's going to do. So I think the film needs a heart, and it's got a big one. You're getting soft, Kevin. <laughs> you fall <laughs> for the sentimentalism. I actually, okay, so I would fall into that category where I do think it was sappy. And I mean, so, okay, so I agree with you on most of the things that it is a multi-layered sci-fi and it's wonderfully done as visuals as envisioning and imagining other like sort of like future and also um imagining other worlds out there all of that stuff is uh, is wonderful um but then i guess the difference to a certain degree comes in what do you expect from a science fiction film of that nature right so Okay, so I will bring out the K word right in the beginning because because we've been grappling with and talking about uh, Christopher Nolan and because he has these big visions, and we've talked about is it Kubrickian or not, right? Or like you know how do we do that? Okay, so let me get it out of the way. No, okay, in the sense that I think the big difference, and this is and the reason I'm bringing it right up front is because this goes to the heart of what you are saying, whether the emotional and interpersonal relation. Does that have to be, or is that the centerpiece versus human nature? And I think Kubrick is more interested in whatever um, forum or whatever, uh, it's a 2001 Space Odyssey, he's using space to explore human nature, whereas for Nolan, uh, he's using it to make a sappy story. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they're, they're both visually beautiful, they both have a lot of ambition, uh, but I guess ultimately it depends upon what you do with science fiction. Okay, well, are, are you saying that, because I think 2001 is a brilliant film, and it's also heartless, um, <laughs> and, that's, and that's okay, because you know, Kubrick was not setting out to, to make something that had some strong interpersonal relationship mm -hmm. at, at the center of it. Um, Nolan is. He's doing the sci-fi, and he's trying to depict a genuine, uh, you know, human, well, multiple human relations between the brother and the sister, the, the father and the son, the father and the daughter, um, amongst the uh, astronauts. Mm -hmm. And I think, I found that refreshing, that they just don't gloss over, oh, these two people don't like each other, or, oh, these people are very much in love, or oh, these, these two people have misunderstandings, and then just, let's just get on with all the science fiction. Nolan takes his time. And I think there's one scene in particular when they have those video uh, messages mm -hmm. that... That was very, very heavy. Um, and we're not getting, getting too much away by talking about like, no, there were video messages. They do go through yeah. the wormhole. I mean, like, no, I, and right. I, I really liked the pacing of the film. It takes a while to sort of like, you know, go off the earth. And I, I thought that was actually wonderful. Well, it's, can I build on that? The pacing and just the, the editorial choices, like mm -hmm. the scenes, like when he's driving and then they start the countdown. Right. It's, it's like you don't need to see his training. You don't need to, to get all that prep stuff. It's like he's decided to go. He's going. Right. Uh, I love that. So the film really moves along and it takes, I wouldn't say it takes like some unexpected turns, but it, it the story unfolds in ways that you really can't predict. 
Okay, and, so okay, so um, I mean, I guess my other question would be, I mean, if we are again, uh, because I'm still stuck on your uh, on the earlier comment. I mean, if, if because we cannot give too much, spo- uh, we cannot talk about the film without giving away some of the key plot points. So we can talk. Well, maybe we should it. stop talking. And and so 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 <laughs> here is here is another way. So thinking about it. Um, uh, okay, so uh, you have. Uh, we are saying like you know that he is talking about heart he's talking about emotions but to me the p- problem is that the emotional explorations are also uh, are actually not that deep they're relatively straightforward uh, and, and so one thing i was thinking about was for example and again i'm going to throw like you know it's an extreme but uh, like you know Lars von Trier like you know okay so his films including oh, melancholia. melancholia, which is all about emotion, right? I mean, to a certain degree. Okay, now, it's a deep exploration of emotions. Now, you can say, oh, you know, you watch that movie and you go like, you know, it makes you think in terms of emotional connections between sisters and so and so forth, right? And between human race. Um, you watch 2001 Space Odyssey and you go like, you know, you, you think about sort of like philosophical questions and all of that stuff. Okay, so you watch Interstellar. Uh, what complex issues do you think about? Uh, well, I think in terms of <clears throat> a father's sense of uh, obligation as a parent, but also as a fellow human being who has the opportunity to help save humanity. Mm -hmm. And so does he stay on earth and just stay with his children and raise them in this, you know, rapidly, you know, depleting environment, Mm -hmm. or does he take this chance of possibly saving, you know, uh, us as a species? I mean, that, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. And I think it plays out well in the film in terms of his, uh, the tension that that causes him and his daughter played, uh, you know, first as a young girl and then later played by Jessica Chastain. I thought, I, thought, I mean, I thought that was good. Where's yeah. his obligation to and, his and, family or to his species? Right. And, and I think, uh, okay, so I will give you a little bit of that aspect because that actually plays well uh, between, in some sense, the brother and the sister also. I mean, his two kids, whereas they both have different ways of thinking about this, uh, this issue. Right, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the the son or, or the brother of Jessica Chastain. I mean, he wants to be tied to the land and doesn't want to leave. It doesn't matter what this kind of situation is. It doesn't matter what it is. Whereas Jessica Chastain's character is more sort of like adventurous, more like her father. And so I think that theme actually is is well done, and it does make a parallel. And uh, and again, on one of the planets, and I don't want to give too much away. We are going to do a spoilers one uh, also, and we can talk a little bit more about it. But there is a exchange of dialogue let's say between about like you know that evolutionary wise like you know uh, we should go in some sense beyond kin uh, connection to species connection and mm-hmm. i thought that was actually fascinating and that actually yeah. does link uh, back to uh, uh, to humans and earth and so i think that element is there but then surrounded by i i found like you know but then it gets diluted by some of the other choices the way the story would go uh, which would make it a more sappiest uh, sort of like because in some sense, in some cases, the the choices which are hard, they got resolved in kind of like a simpler way, uh, and you don't go like, oh my goodness, okay, so, uh, so so and another way to think about that would be, I mean, I was thinking uh, of people thinking about one way trips to Mars. I think that's a much harder problem, and I think that's a real problem that whether people are going to do that or not, and so on and so forth. Here, there is always this notion that he's going to come back. I can, that element is there, and so it makes that choice easy. And I think Nolan could have made it harder. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, maybe just move on to talk a little bit about casting and the construction of the film. Except that we are running out of time. We are running out of time. I think it was well made. I definitely think people should go see it and see it in the theater. You don't want to be one of those people who later says, like you hear them now say, oh, I've seen 2001, but I just watched it on my laptop. No, see Interstellar in the theater. Absolutely. Or IMAX, I would say, or XD, HD, whatever. XD, uh, see it on the biggest possible screen. It's like gravity to a certain degree, which was a Oh, it's so much better than gravity. Right, but in terms of visuals. (laughs) But in terms of visuals. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So you see it on the big screen. All right. Well, we will be back <laughs> with a spoiler one as well. And, yes. uh, and hopefully the film autopsy can be resurrected. <laughs> All right. Good seeing you. All right. Okay.